Welcome to our discussion of the Java bifunction functional interface. In this part of the lesson, we'll describe the structure and functionality of Java bifunction, and we'll show how it can be used in conjunction with Lambda expressions and or method references. As always, this particular example is going to demonstrate bifunction in the context of an example from my open source repository available at the link at the bottom of the slide. And this particular example will showcase the use of bifunction in conjunction with the Java collection frameworks concurrent hash map class. So what's a bifunction? A bifunction can be used to apply a computation on two parameters and return one result. As you can see here, bifunction is an interface in modern Java that takes three reference types as generic parameters. And they're used as follows in the apply abstract method. The first parameter, t, is the first parameter that's passed to apply. The second type parameter, u, is also passed as the second parameter to apply. t and u are distinct here, so we can have different values or different types for each of those. They don't have to be the same type. They often are, but they don't have to be. And then finally, r will be the return value or the result that comes back from the apply abstract method. We'll take a look at an example here to make this all more concrete that comes from my GitHub repository in the ex4 folder. Once again, this example will use the Three Stooges in order to illustrate the key points. Remember again that the Three Stooges were a comedy vaudeville act from many, many years ago, and they made a lot of money pretending to be dumb. Uh, of course, they were very cunning to make a lot of money doing that. So we're gonna have ourselves a Stooge or Stooges local variable, which is going to be a map that maps string to integer, where string is the name of each of the Stooges, Larry, Curly, or Mo, and integer is my uh, humorous guess at what they're purported IQ might have been to be dumb. Uh, again, all in good sense of humor. So we're going to make ourselves a concurrent hash map, and we're going to initialize Larry with the value of an IQ of 100, Curly with the value of 90, and Mo with the value of 110, because he was always the smart stooge. We're then going to show a couple of different ways to change the values in this stooges map. The first way is going to use classic kind of earlier Java, not modern Java, but earlier Java features, in particular, a Java for each loop and the map.entry class. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say for, which starts our for each loop, map.entry string integer entry, which defines the element that we're going to be iterating over each time, colon stooges.entry set. And stooges.entry set, of course, is a factor method that's going to return the entry set associated with that map. And then for each of the entries in that entry set, we're going to take each entry in turn and set its value to be the current value of the entry minus 50. So we're going to make the Stooges appear even less intelligent than they already appeared. So that's one way to do things. The alternative way of doing things is to use the replace all method that's part of modern Java's concurrent hash map, Java 8 and beyond. And here we're going to use the replace all method. And replace all is going to use a lambda expression and a by function in order to be able to subtract 50 IQ points from each stooge in the map and update the map's settings for its values accordingly. So as you can see here, this by function takes two parameters, k and v for key and value. And what we're going to do is we're going to say v minus 50. That's really the lambda expression. It's the body of the lambda expression. And that's going to effectively subtract 50 from each value. And then you can't quite tell it from this, but when we look at the implementation, you'll see this. It'll update the value associated with the key to the new value, which subtracts 50 off the old value. Unlike the for each loop with the entry operations, replace all operates in a thread safe manner. And it's a bit beyond the scope of this particular discussion to show how that works, but rest assured that it works that way. And it makes the code not only more concise, but also more thread safe, which is a good added virtue. So let's take a look at how replace all is implemented in the Java source code. As you can see here, replace all uses the by function that's passed to it in a thread safe way. Again, I'm not going to go through the threading part, but you can look at the code to see how it works. So the parameter to replace all is called function, although it's a by function, and it takes those three type parameters we talked about before. What it's going to do is it's going to go ahead at the appropriate time as it iterates through all the elements that are in the concurrent hash map, and it's going to call the apply method on the by function, taking in the key that we're looking at at each point and the existing value that's in the map. And what it's going to do is it's going to apply the key to the old value. And as you can see here, it's going to return a new value. And then that new value will be used to replace the old value in the map with the new value that's associated with that particular key. And again, all this takes place 
atomically and in a thread safe way. If you think about what we're doing here with the example, we're passing in this lambda expression, which is basically V minus 50, which is V is the value of minus 50. And that's what's bound to the by function when we call replace all in our test program. And then kind of this is what's happening if you think about logically what's going on under the hood. Function dot apply is being turned into old value minus 50, and that's being assigned to the new value. And then the new value, of course, is being used with a call to replace node to replace the old value with the new value for that particular key. So very cool, very simple, just really an extension a bit over top of function, just adding in a second parameter. So that's what makes it a by function as opposed to a traditional function that takes one parameter and returns one result. So that's the end of our discussion of the Java by function functional interface.